Hey everybody, before this episode begins, just want to give it a heads up. About halfway through the podcast, we unfortunately experienced some audio issues. I did my best to fix it, but uh, just a heads up, when you start hearing it, uh, it's not your device, it is the podcast, so uh, if, if it's really too bother, we understand if you don't want to listen to it, but uh, thanks for understanding. Hello everybody and welcome to the latest issue of Comic Book Gentlemen. I'm your host Greg, I'm joined by my co-host Dave. Hope everybody's well. Yeah, uh, this is the podcast where we use our decades of comic book experience to dis- uh, discuss some of the most divisive issues in t- the industry. Uh, today is kind of a different one. It's a little bit more casual. Uh, I have a story for you, Dave. I, I, I sensed uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, some possibly some angst. A little in, bit of angst. Voice it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a rant. <laughs> Uh, well, so, rent away, please. Yeah, so I had some free time, as most people do, last uh, couple weeks, and I was like surfing the, you know, got some Netflix, got some, uh, got some Amazon Prime video and all that stuff, and then I stumble upon Disney Plus, which I don't open too often because there's not a lot on there that I haven't already seen, and I noticed, hey, look, Runaway season one. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Runaways. I don't know if you've ever read it, Dave, back in the day. No, I, I am vaguely familiar with the Runaways. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not surprised. It was definitely made for teenagers. Uh, that's definitely what it's aimed for. So for, for those of you who don't know, Runaways was a uh, series created by Brian K. Vaughn, and I can't remember the artist's name, but it was back in like 2003, 2004. Uh, what it is about is a group of teenagers uh, basically discover, some of them have powers, but they also discover their parents are basically evil. They've been sacrificing people for multiple years and so yeah the parents kind of they're not the parents the kids kind of you know find this out and go like hey that's evil uh maybe we shouldn't you know maybe we should fight against our parents and then kind of hijinks ensue uh that's Mm -hmm. kind of like the really basic concept of it the thing i always enjoyed about runaways the story uh was it was kind of like a teen drama but in the world of marvel so you had like you know they, they constantly made references to like you know, oh, last week, you know, Captain America was on the news or something like that. And, like, but right, they still right. had their team drama. And I'm a huge sucker for team drama, so I really enjoyed it. Especially because uh, when who, I first started watching it, I was not a teen. I know, right? Like, sucker for team drama. Sucker for team drama. So, when they when they first announced Runaways, the TV show, I was pretty excited because I was like, hey, you know, I like this comic book. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with the TV show. Uh, the one thing that, the first thing that really disappointed me was I found out it was a Hulu exclusive which we live in Canada, so that yeah. basically means we can't watch it. <laughs> Fair. Which is BS. So I was excited because that's when I, so when I saw it was on Disney Plus, I was excited because it was like, okay, fine, I can watch this. Mm-hmm. So I sit down to watch it, and what was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is only season one, so I can't say it's season two and three, because again, for some reason, they don't have season two and three in, in Canada. But they had season one, so I watched season one. So like I said, the, the reason I liked Runaways, the comic book, was, you know, you had some teen drama. Oh, he likes her, but she likes her. And, like, he doesn't like her. She, he doesn't know or stuff like that. But then you also had superhero stuff going on in the background. What they changed, right. like, there were some things I liked about the show. Uh, mm-hmm. First thing I liked is the casting was amazing. They had all the characters, like, the actors who played each character were really great. Uh, they stayed pretty true for the for the kids. They stayed pretty true to their like story uh, personalities and whatnot. Other than right. like a couple tweaks just to make the story work better. And the second thing I really liked about the show is they focused a lot on the parents as well and really like mm. gave the parents a lot more depth. Because in the comic books, there's a little bit of spoilers for Runaways, which has been out for almost twenty years now. Is the parents die pretty quick in the story? Like, okay. they, like, the kids basically, like, they don't kill their parents, but they defeat their parents, like, pretty early on in the story. Right. Um, so it's one of those things where it's, like, the parents were always just, like, the evil group kind of following them around. And, okay. like, the kids would, like, you know, fight them once, like, not fight them, but more, like, just avoid them more than anything. But, like, like then, like, the second or, s- first or second volume or, so- like, story arc, they kind of defeat them. And it's, like, okay, never mind them. So it's one of those things where it's, like... It makes sense for the show to focus a lot more on the parents because the parents were really important for the story. Right. And so, but what they do in the TV show is they basically like they have the kid, the group of kids, and then they have their drama. But then they gave the parents their own set of drama, and it was like on one hand it was really good because it fleshed them out, but on the other hand you still had the issue of like all these parents who are supposed to be like thirty four year old cult cult 
leaders sacrifice people or having this BS squabbles like oh the one dad sleeping with the mom or something like that it was like what okay is like I said it was, it's, it's one of those things where it's like it was good but it was bad so the things right. I hated and I think this is something we can lean into uh, in, in further discussion with other shows as well is it yep. like it forgot that it was a superhero show because <laughs> so here's what would happen is they would like have to create a conflict and you know they're just discovering their power so it's a stereotypical like origin story like oh I, I i think my power does this but i don't really know what i'm doing so it's like really limited but like when they actually had to sit down and fight people it was the worst like they literally <laughs> like the the worst the most egregious battle in the whole and they only had like two battles and the first one doesn't even really even count so really the only battle in the whole first season was the second last episode the kids line up and the parents line up and face each other and then they like stand there and like look at each other really angrily and then okay. yeah yeah it's it's starting off great and then <laughs> the one dad like sh like moves forward so the girl with the similar powers like his daughter moves forward as well and then they just kind of like throw energy balls at each other in like really <laughs> crappy cg uh, and then she tells her friends, you guys should run. I'll take care of this. Then their friend, her friends run away. And then they get like two feet. And they're like, wait, no, what are we doing? We got to go back for our friend. Which is like, why would you abandon her then? If you're just going to turn around for two seconds. But by the time they got back, the battle was over. Oh. And that's and, the... That was and the, who won? Well, the parents. Because the parents <laughs> just knew what they were doing. But it was right. like... But nothing happened. Like, they... <laughs> like, it literally... Like... I understand like the appeal of the show was drama like that was it was supposed to be like ooh it's you know a teen drama but you know superpowers are involved and whatnot but then they forgot the superpowers and like yeah. well, here's the other thing is there's one person she doesn't have superpowers but her gimmick is she has a telepathic connection with a velociraptor okay which is really cool and it, they actually have the velociraptor in the show and he's not bad like like the cg on him is not bad but so for this battle, so they, the kids, like I said, the kids were lined up, the parents were lined up, the Velociraptor comes running towards the parents, and you're like, oh, sick, the Velociraptor's gonna, like, jump in and, like, tear somebody's head off and, like, destroy them. No, one of the dads just point a tranquilizer gun at it and shoots it. And well, it was, that's it was just what you done. do. I mean, if you watch Jurassic Park. That's just what you do, that's, yeah. That's what you do. But, like, it was just so anticlimactic. <laughs> where it's like, and the thing is, like, I don't understand what they spent their money on that they couldn't afford to have combat scenes. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like it's expensive yeah. to show two teenagers in a room talking to each other. It's not like that's where all the budget went. So it's like, it's almost like they just forgot that they had to do a superhero thing. Because it's like, if you had, if you had the same show, but without the powers, I'm sure somebody mm -hmm. would watch that. But like, then why, like, why would you call that Runaways? That's not Runaways. Runaways is like, you know, kind of like X Men. That's one of the great things about X Men when you have a brand new class. Was like you have these young kids, they're you know brand new powers, still figuring that out. Meanwhile, they also had to figure out like, oh, does he like me back and does she like me type of thing. And like that was always was intriguing about the Runaways. They kind of had that dynamic. But again, right. if you don't actually have the the superhero element to it. Then you're just wasting my time, and it just yeah, makes me it's mad. Kind of, it, it's a, that's what is kind of essentially drawing you in initially. Yeah, is, I thought hey, I, got... I, I know the Runaways. I've read the comic. I'm gonna watch the show. I'm excited, and then when they deviate away from anything that resembles the Runaways, well, like it, it really just becomes like Riverdale. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's what that's what it felt like. It felt like just Riverdale. But, but with Marvel's name on it type of thing, right? <laughs> and like I said, like, normally I'm down for that because for some reason that's, like, my secret, you know, like, secret, um, what's that called? Um, guilty pleasure. It's my guilty pleasure. Right. It's really crappy teen dramas. Like, they're well, so sure, stupid sure. they make me laugh. But I was excited yeah. for the run Runaways because it's, like, you got that plus superhero elements to it. And then they just didn't do any superhero stuff. Right. And I was just like, you tricked me. Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, feel, I, feel like... I feel like they they like if if you if you go back in time for a moment mm -hmm. and look at some of the shows that they they came up with initially, uh, you know, way back in the day, like Lois and Clark, 
really back in the day. Yeah, really back in the day. Yeah. Uh, the original Flash. Like, there wasn't a lot of... There was a little bit of superhero stuff, but it was like they they just didn't have that budget or that capability mm-hmm. to do something well. So they focused on, you know, more the non-superhero element of the characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now you're in an age where you've got uh, a lot of big budgets. You've got a lot of, uh, you know, amazing talents in the CGI world. Um it just seems like now we're entering, you know, we, we, we hit this phase of, oh, comics are cool. Uh, everybody likes watching, uh, you know, the movies. Uh, they love watching the TV shows. And now we're hitting, an, like, a it's almost like an era of cringe-worthy superhero attempted TV series. Yeah. Where's, yeah, people are just I, of... I think even some of... The, even some of the, the even some of the series that that I'd initially watched, um, you know, and very much enjoyed, like Arrow, uh, Flash, yeah. So you know, and it's weird because it's all the DC stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and I'm not a huge DC fan, but I very much enjoyed the first couple seasons of Arrow. I mean, uh, my wife and I uh, were right into it. Uh, Flash was 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 great. I very much enjoyed that one. They had a, like a really uh, twisty element to it, uh, as far as like trying to figure out who the big bad is, you know, through throughout the the first couple seasons, uh, and then it, it just it's hit this element where you've crammed too many characters into it. Uh, they all have you know relationships, and these relationships are you know now becoming the more central focus because I think in a lot of cases on you know the the CW and uh, the Arrowverse I guess I call it. Uh, you have these these people that are, I guess, maybe more drawn to that, mm-hmm. uh, to the point where you know you made you almost forget that I'm watching Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I'm watching, you know, some kind of soap opera. Yeah, and the plus... guy just happens to throw on a green, you know, suit and run around with a bow every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> takes away from the main focus. Like, I mean, I, I guess, like, you could argue that, like, you know, superheroes and comic books are supposed to be like. A reflection of reality and like they they take you know they have drama it's just mm-hmm. one of those things where it's like like i understand the appeal of drama it's just there's also the appeal of superheroes like i'm like i would have been fine if they spent the first half of the of the season going like oh i don't know if he likes me or whatever but then at least if you're gonna have a, a climactic battle at mm-hmm. least actually punch each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> at least, like, live up to the... Because another show, like, I mean, there's even superhero shows where they don't have, like, powers, but they have, you know, really good hand-to-hand combat. Like, you look at Daredevil on Netflix, you look at, uh, like, I guess, yeah. uh, I was going to say Luke Cage and Iron Fist, but they kind of have powers. But it's more about hand-to-hand combat. Like, you can, you can do really good fight scenes without a huge budget. If you just chore- yeah. choreograph it properly, and they even yeah. had drama too. Like they had, they had their moments of like, oh, I ended up, you know, Electra always messes with my head, you know, type of thing. It's just, one, it's just one of those things where it felt like a really big bait and switch, where it's like it's a, it's a comic book show. Uh, oh yeah, we forgot the comic part. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think, I think with 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 regards to some of it is uh, obviously you know bad writing. Um, you know, or they'll get through a you know one or two decent seasons, and suddenly discover, oh crap, we're running out of material <laughs> that, that that we can actually produce for a TV show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they start spinning it into all all kinds of different things, and I mean that that's you know like Arrow. One of the reasons why I bailed off of that show, and and we've just had such a hard time getting into it is every season didn't matter. Every season there were two things that happened. Somebody went too far. Oh. And then the rest of the team was like, you went too far. <laughs> and then they, you know, abandoned them. Or, I can't trust you. You're oh. keeping secrets. And it was always somebody else. So, you know, the first season would be Arrow. And then the next season would be his, you know, quasi-girlfriend Felicity. Mm-hmm. And then the next one would be Diggle. Oh. And then, but it was always the same plot line. <laughs> Just a different I can't person. trust you. You went too far. Yeah, you know, it, it, and and every every single season it was the it, it just got to the part where it was like repeat. You'd start the next season, and literally, I remember uh, 
uh, sitting here with my wife, and we just started the first uh, the first episode of I think it was like season five or something like that, and uh, we both looked at each other and went. I wonder who went too far <laughs> <laughs> in this season. Yeah. You know, it, it just, it, it's just, some of it is just, a, I think, a, a question of bad writing. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like, with with something like The Runaways, I think you'd really need somebody, like a director, producer, somebody, that knew what the hell they were doing with that. Mm-hmm. Because I find a lot of a lot of these networks, like whether it's the TV networks, uh, or, or you know, your Netflix, your Amazons, whatnot. They're just grabbing any comic book material they can. Yeah. And then they're just plastering it in into their uh, their services. And some of them just really don't haven't taken the time to actually get a, a director, uh, you know, actors, writers, you know, that actually understand the material they're working with to make it worth watching. Yeah. So the interesting thing is like one of the big uh appeals that was supposed to be for runaways and let's see if i can make sure i check my notes here Mm -hmm. um is that the the people who were running the show were the ones that created gossip girl (laughs) and here's the thing is like wow yeah here's the thing is like that like i said as a person who enjoyed you know crappy teen dramas gossip girl is the number one crappy teen drama Mm -hmm. so it's like then it's like that should be the good thing. It's just like they, I feel like, like you're saying, it's like they focused too much on that. Like they got the people who knew how to do that, but they didn't get the people who actually cared about runaways or like knew what they were doing with the comic book aspect of it. Yeah. And so they got the drama, but then they forgot the actual comic book thing. And it's just one of those things where it's like, like, are we hitting the point now where comic book stuff is now too popular or so popular that it's just like, like you said, they're just taking a paintbrush and like taking whatever they, whatever statue or artwork they find and just painting comic book over it. And it's not actually like comic book thing, and it's just like you know a bait and switch type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I I, I very much think that that is going on. And and again, you have, um, I, I have found like uh, like for instance Netflix with The Punisher, uh, Daredevil, two of my favorites. Uh, I have very much enjoyed all of those. Uh, right through both seasons, um, very like just just great. Uh, you know, yes, uh, I'll go on my old man rant and say, oh, they slightly deviated from you know the, the the material a little bit here and there, obviously, but for the most part, I just great. Like, really enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke Cage wasn't overly familiar. I was uh, intrigued because you know it was it was kind of my first real deep dive into just Luke Cage, not Luke Cage on the Avengers and the comics. And it's just a different, different feel. Uh, this Luke Cage was just, you know, really, really entertaining, especially some of the little uh, East uh, with the, with the stupid little headband that he was wearing <laughs> in the first one, uh, yeah. like little things like that just cracked me up. You know, Iron Fist, I was very much looking forward to Iron Fist, but again, I feel like the writers were like, let's make this guy, the whiniest bitch <laughs> you've ever heard of. Yeah. Uh, it, it just it just didn't feel like Danny Rand. It didn't like the character. Uh, you know, they, they, they failed there. And, I mean, they had a budget. They had a lot of uh, success with other series before that. Um, you know, one of the ones that I thought was, was fantastic, uh, with not a lot of, you know, superhero on supervillain action kind of thing, was, was Jessica Jones. I, I was the first season was terrific. Uh, David Tennant as the as the purple man was just creepy as hell. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 those ones were good. But I mean, they can go they can go wrong. Defenders, eh, it was okay. I didn't it had its it. moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, Iron Fist, uh, you know, kind of kind of a miss there. Uh, TV series wise, I, I thought the first. Uh, season of Shield, uh, Agents of Shield, was just trash. I don't know <laughs> how I managed to get through the first season to keep watching it. It's, it's but then when they started on. to connect it into what was going on in the movies, like Winter Soldier and you know the fall of Shield and rise of Hydra and all, it, it got it got so much better. Mm-hmm. But again, you've got a lot of that personal drama driving kind of the narrative and direction of the show versus like what's actually going on, like. You think of some of these events that are going on. Okay, this is going to destroy the Earth, but we got time to have some sexual tension. <laughs> always have time for sexual. You always tension. have time. 
Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think it's a lot of hit and miss. Inhumans was just an absolute epic failure. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the worst ones I've I've seen. Uh, DC, in my opinion, seems at least for the first couple seasons, seems to to do a better job on the on the the more television network mm-hmm. type stuff. Uh, but the the Netflix, like when they treat it like, okay, nobody's gonna go watch a ten hour movie of Daredevil, but I sure as shit will ben, binge watch ten one hour episodes yeah. of Daredevil on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. And with that, you can create a, a much better, uh, a much better story. Uh, you can dive a little deeper. Uh, you can actually get the actors to full, you know, show their full range of, of you know, character development. Uh, but you have to have, you know, a producer, a writer, a director that that understand what they're going for, or it's just mm. going to be garbage. Yeah, you actually have direct. You need to do direction. Otherwise, yeah. it's just it just you know you just get a you know. Yeah, just a flaccid nothing show. So yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, you, we've talked about. I mean, I I didn't mind. I'm not a huge fan, but didn't mind the first season of Titans. Yeah. So this is kind of the. It's interesting to compare Runaways to Titans because they right. have very similar aspects. Where it's like it focuses on you know teen heroes, and then it focuses on like you know they deal with superhero stuff, but they still have the you know the drama of. Um, the drama of you know relationships and whatnot and, and that's definitely more in the comic books because the way they like it's interesting to see what each like the way marvel treated runaways and then the way dc treated titans is they did very different things so like for runaways they kept it like they they doubled down on the t- the teen aspect they doubled down on the like you know the teen drama aspect whereas titans it felt more like i mean they even made them all adults basically like i think the only one that was a yeah. teen in the show was raven and then, yeah. so what they did is they, they doubled down on the superhero aspect. Because, like, I remember I watched, like, not all of Titan Season 1, but I watched it quite a bit. And they had, you know, pretty much a fight, like, multiple fights each episode. Yeah. And it felt yeah. like that. But my issue with Titans is, like, it felt like it's... I, I probably sound like a huge hypocrite there, but it felt like that was all there was, was the good fight scenes. <laughs> and they never had anything, yeah. like, in between that you made you care for the characters. Yeah, because you just had you know Robin going the the famous like f Batman you know scene yeah. and like like him just being angsty without justifying him being angsty type of thing, yeah. and like and then it was like I'm gonna go punch a dude you know type of thing just to get my angst out type of thing and like it's just one of those things where it's like I feel like both went different directions and I didn't mm-hmm. like either direction, so maybe no, that's it, just it, me being picky. I don't know what was it, what was your opinion on Titans? I'm curious. I what I I guess what I didn't like is the fact that they they very much um it's like the dark knight series came out gritty dark you know batman Mm -hmm. works for batman big success and then they were like hey let's just make all of our shit gritty and dark (laughs) yeah which doesn't work for you know some of the characters like making the flash gritty and dark doesn't doesn't make any sense Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's where I found the Titans. I found the Titans, like, could it have its moments? Sure. But I was expecting more of a, kind of a, more of an upbeat, and it had, again, it had its moments. But there was definitely, just even the way it was filmed, had a Batman-esque, Dark Knight grittiness to it, which it just didn't feel like it fit. Mm-hmm. And and for me, I think it was, like, not being overly familiar with the Titans, um, you know, especially some of the more obscure ones uh, that definitely weren't, you know, headliners on on cartoons for years and years before. Uh, it, it just, it, it was just for me. It was just intriguing to see these characters, and and I thought the, you know, the special effects for the most part were were pretty good. Uh, you know, the story was interesting. I didn't like where they left it off because they just built it up to this like massive massive breaking point and then just end it <laughs> and yeah. both my even myself and my wife were just kind of like okay is there a season two is there a season two like we gotta like this is this is like this was it was it it, it reminded me so much of the 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 walking deads kind of end with with negan where oh who who's you know whose head did he beat in with the bat mm-hmm. uh well everybody knows whose it was and the fact that they didn't show it and then made you wait all summer just to basically show you what you already knew was was 
was pointless. This was just like, okay, there's no, I, I felt like it got to the end of the season. I was like, I'm, it's not resolved. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, I feel like there's nothing resolved. All you did was build up all of my anxiety about the show <laughs> and then just walked away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I so, mean, like, I guess the, the reasoning behind it would probably just like, oh, but that means they'll really be excited for the next season. And that means we get, you know, keep our jobs type of thing. Like that is what that type of thing feels like. Yeah, but it, I, I always felt like, you know, the ones that did a good job where they, they finished the story arc, mm-hmm. right? And then and then at the end left that, that hook for next season. Yeah. You know, by showing you the flash of the, you know, flash of the, like, the next villain or, you know, some kind of, you know, switcheroo that you didn't see coming that, that kind of gets you going like, oh, my God, like, I feel satisfied, but I want to see the next season because of what you just showed me in the last, like, two minutes of the show. Yeah, you you finish the story, so I'm satisfied, but I still want more. Yeah, yeah, kind of like what they usually did with the after credit stuff with the movies, where it's like, hey, this movie's done, but bam, you know, Nick Fury wants to assemble the Avengers. You know, get ready. Yeah, I, and and some of those again, I felt like really hit the mark, mm-hmm. and then some of them were just kind of like a fizzle. Yeah, they just put like, them in there because they they had to. You know. Yeah, it's like oh, it's a, it's our thing, <laughs> so mm-hmm. let's just you know put something in there. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's it's been, you know, it, it's been so much material getting poured out there, and what I what I don't understand with, you know, to get back to you know your your rant about the Runaways is you have a comic, so you have a story, mm-hmm. you have multiple story arcs that obviously worked because people were uh, impressed or or liked, you know, the 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 the, the comic. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why they they just can't take something like that and say, okay, hey, here we go. We got we got miles and miles of material. Let's just use the material that already worked. Mm-hmm. Instead, they try to like twist it around, make their own thing, kind of follow the thing. But no, we're gonna have the parents have their own little thing. It didn't happen in the comics. Like, like I, I'm not interested in the parents. Yeah. I mean, if it has a big thing, to, you know, big. Uh, you know, to do with the the overall pl- plot of what's going on, sure. Yeah. But I mean, if it doesn't, what the hell am I watching? Like, I'm not watching it for the parents. No, exactly. Right? Like, you're, you're there for a reason, and your reason for being there was because of your love for the pre- the original material. Yeah. So when you don't have that match up. It's like, well, I feel like yeah, there there's no other reason for me to to watch this other than you put the same name on it. Yeah. Like, the only thing I can think of that was, like, w- the reasons why they don't stick 100% of the material is there is stuff in comic books that is ridiculous. Like, oh, I mean... Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, like, in Runaways, the... they I And mean, this is one of the things they changed. And again, spoilers for Runaways, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's, like, 20 years old, so I'm just going to spoil it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> is, uh, like, the thing they were sacrificing, too, was, like, a, a bunch of demons. Or, like, uh, the, the, the Gibor... Uh, right. There's a bunch of demons. They kept sacrificing them. The Gaborim the, the would be like, you know, hey, thanks for you know giving us sacrifices. Here's a bunch of wealth and power and all that stuff. And so, and like the and like the way the parents die is like the kids stop them from sacrificing something to the Gaborim, so then the Gaborim you know kill the parents, whatever. But it's like right. you physically see the Gaborim and like these massive demons and whatnot. And I can kind of see like if you're not a comic book fan and you're just like a regular you know Joe, just you know like hey, let's watch the show. You might be like. I don't understand what's with these random, you know, demons taking over the world and like that type of stuff, like a ridiculous level. But at the same time, it's like, but that's what is cool about comics. So it's like, mm-hmm. I don't like. I feel like sometimes they adjust comics to, for regular viewers, and it's okay. But it feels yep. like most of the time they adjust it when they don't need it, and they don't like trust regular viewers to understand. Yeah, you know, and it's just yeah. one of those things where it's like. Who, who are you making the show for? Are you making the show for me, who's been a fan for, you know, 20 years? Or are you making the show to appeal to potentially some random new people that, like, you know, it, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a, t- it's a tough balance. And we kind of talked about this before in our, in our first episode, too, when we were, t- or the movie, the episode we were talking about the movies, where it's like yeah. you have to, like, appeal to both, where you had to appeal to previous fans and, like, new fans as well. But I mm-hmm. feel like it just... Yeah, like, if you don't, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's, like, if you don't get that balance, you can just see how rough it is. Yeah. And it's just, like, no, and it's, it's just really yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's, uh, you know, like, don't don't dumb it down. Yeah. 
<laughs> and don't try to, you know, make it more, uh, for lack of a better word, realistic. Because mm -hmm. comic books are not realistic. No. There's nothing about them that's realistic. Well, I think the closest you could get is is maybe, like, the Punisher, with the exception of, like, if he fought in the Vietnam War, it'd be, like, way too old to be doing what he's doing right now. Yeah. But it, it, it's, like, just just do, just, you know, stick true to the source and, and, and do it. If you're going to deviate from the storyline, you know, create some things that weren't there, okay. But uh, I just feel like when you take the whole thing, try to make it your own, or try to dumb it down, it, it just loses itself. And that's where I feel like either the producer, the director, the writers, uh, you know, just don't understand the source material. Because there's probably a lot of people out there that were like, oh, Runaway is right on, I want to watch this, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of the comic, you know, and watched it. Maybe some of them watched it and thought, oh, that was awesome, just because they were just excited to see these characters on, on TV. And there were probably others very much like yourself going, what is this? Yeah. Garbage fire. Yeah. And like I said, like there were good parts to the show. Like I said, I think the I think the main cast was really well selected, and I think that you know they 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 did add some elements that were interesting. It's just then they deviated too much into the thing I actually didn't care about, which like you know I still wanted my superhero element to it because if you didn't have a superhero element to it, it's just it's just a it's just a show. Then it's it's just yeah. silly. So then. The one thing that's happening hopefully soon, like it was supposed to come out, all, it was supposed to start this year, but may not happen until next year because of the whole, you know, world situation, is the yeah. Disney Plus, you know, MCU mm -hmm. series. So do yeah. you, so you, so like you said, we've, we've tried multiple comic book shows now, like we've mm -hmm. done Titans, we've done Runaways, we've done the Netflix series and whatnot. Do you yeah. think these Disney Plus ones are going to be good? Or are you like, eh, we'll see. Um, I'm hopefully optimistic on the Falcon Captain America, uh, or sorry, Winter Soldier one, mm -hmm. uh, just because of who they've got, like they've, they've got, you know, obviously the actors from the movies, which is, which is great. Huge. So yeah, you're, huge. you've got some continuity there. Mm -hmm. Um, but also the Baron Zemo, uh, and especially the, the little teaser they showed you where, you know, he, he showed up at the, the Comic-Con and hijacked the the, the Comic-Con and then put on the, the actual Baron Zemo mask. Mm -hmm. I was, like, super stoked. And like I said, when you take something like that, and and I think that's where these, these types of things, in my opinion, are going to put movies to bed, are the fact that you can take a storyline, stretch it out over ten... Uh, episodes, an hour each, or however long you want to make them. Uh, so you have so much more time to develop the story, get into the characters, and I'm hopeful that that they do that with this because I've seen it with other other series uh, where it's just so much more interesting. Like I, I feel like there's only so much you can do in a two hour span with a movie, especially with something as big as like the Avengers, because you have so many characters to cram into it. Yeah. Right. Spider Man was great when it was just like Spider Man, Green Goblin, or Spider Man, you know, o Doctor Octopus. But when they start trying to throw in, you know, Venom and Sandman and Green Goblin two and this and that, it's just like you, you just don't have enough time yeah. in a movie. To do that, if you want to do that in a ten-episode, hour-long uh, episode series on Netflix, I, it would probably be much better. Mm -hmm. So I'm hopefully I'm 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 optimistic with that one. I'm not overly like personally. I'm not a huge fan of of uh, uh, Vision and Wan and Wanda, uh, Scarlet Witch. Yeah. It, it just as characters, I've just never. You know, were characters that I gravitated towards, but I, you know, I very much over the last little bit, and mostly because of of the the person that's played him, I'm I'm curious about the Loki one. Yeah, just to, to see to, to see is. what happens there. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, they've got enough money, so budget's <laughs> not a problem. You know, uh, so, yeah. you know, CGI shouldn't be a problem so you know now you got 10 hours <laughs> yeah see that's what i'm saying is like these ones it's like now there's no excuse like you don't no. have the issue you had with the netflix one where it's like they were they they couldn't fully commit to whether or not they were in the mcu you know they, yeah. the budget wasn't you know disney level budget it's like now you have 
you know, unlimited budget, you have, you know, you're connected to the MCU, and it's like, you, you have, you know, more time to actually develop characters. So it's like, my, my expectations for these are so high. It's yeah. like, if they're not good, it's like, what, what are you guys even doing? But the one thing well, I've, I think about a lot with these shows coming out is it feels like the ones previous to it, you know, were based off the comic books. But I feel right. like now the MCU is has been here enough and has established their characters enough that it's almost like the these shows aren't based off the comic books. It feels like they're just based off the MCU now. Yeah. Like I'm I'm curious to see what like if they're gonna copy any storylines from the comics or if they're just gonna like mm -hmm. no, we're just making new stuff now and it just has the same names as those characters. Like is can you think of any storyline you think you can think of that would be good for Falcon Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and uh and Loki that Oof. you think would be cool to in incorporate? Well, it's it, it's uh it's tough. Like I mean for for myself, um uh, I believe uh, the the story arc where where uh, you know the Scarlet Witch kind of turned, uh, kind of had a an alternate personality uh, and 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 became this villain would be kind of an uh, you know an interesting twist to 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 see you know play out um, for myself like Winter Soldier and and uh, and Falcon there really hasn't been like a storyline necessarily with those two. So I think they would probably have to rob from, you know, from a, like a Captain America storyline. Like yeah. I think if they, if they dealt with uh, like Scourge, who was basically an anti hero slash villain, they went around and just murdered super villains and, and, and killed them off. Uh, and it was a whole big thing, uh, you know, way back when, and they just recently brought him back in Captain America comics. Uh, you know that would that would be a story. You know you could kind of you know pick out of there and and bring in uh, to a uh, to a Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, as far as Loki, I have no idea. I mean, it really yeah. at the end of the day, just throw you know uh, just throw good old Tom out there and just let him go to town. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, just ad lib. That show should just not even have a script. It should just be ad libbed the entire way through, yeah. uh, and it would be probably pretty. Pretty great. Well, it's even uh, it's even better for that because Owen Wilson is confirmed for that show. Yeah. So yeah, it's just gonna be Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson just ripping off each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it, it's it, it'll be interesting to see where where this uh, where this translates because I think if they get a lot of uh, you know if they get a lot of buzz off of this, if people are enjoying these you know these uh, these longer drawn out, I mean, essentially they're a movie that's just been chopped up. Mm -hmm. um, if if they if they really hit the mark on this, uh, I'd really like to see them explore characters that that format would make a lot of sense for, like mm -hmm. Moon Knight. Oh yeah, I think would be fantastic. Blade mm -hmm. would be would be another one, even though he's been done over and over and over again. Um, Ghost Rider would be very interesting. Yeah, which they I know you and I would disagree on which Ghost Rider, but, yeah. but you know, Ghost Rider would be interesting. Like, there's a bunch of characters that I think would really be interesting in that format, and I think that's where they nailed it on Netflix with Daredevil and the Punisher and these characters uh, that were that are just, you know, if you were just going to have a movie, it would just be basically the Punisher shooting people for an hour and a half. Uh, it'd be like a John Wick movie, and uh, probably not anywhere near as good. And and that would be it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the, in this, you manage to you know draw out the story, uh, really get into the character, um, and not in an annoying way where you're like, okay, come on, get on with it. it, it th I thought they did a really good job with those, but I don't think you can bring a like a. Well, not that you can't, but I, I mean, if you brought an Iron Man or a, a Captain America, you know, level status superhero to a format like that. I don't. I don't know what that would look like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with the Disney Plus shows because if they're really popular and they're really good, I mean, obviously maybe mm -hmm. they'll do and try to do with every character, and then maybe what they'll do with the movies is just group movies. Because, like, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's definitely something that Defenders failed at. Was like you're saying, like you had Daredevil, you had Luke Cage, you had Iron Fist and Jessica Jones, where they had their time to develop their character. But I felt like what Defenders should have been. Is just let now let's group up and just you know punch somebody. Yeah. But like but defenders still had like each one was still having their own personal drama, 
like and like kept like interrupting like them you know hanging out together and, and beating people up and it's like i feel like what they should have done is made defenders you know cut the episode number in half and just you know fist fight and that would have been a lot more entertaining than what it ended up being <laughs> Just everybody gets beat up. Yeah, because that was the best part of that show is when they were in, like, like the scene where yep. they go, I can't remember, I think it's in the Rand building, I can't remember, but they go to, like, they literally all end up at the same place at the same time, turns out the building's full of ninjas, fight your way out of there. Like, that was one of yeah. the best scenes of that whole show. And it's like, yeah. I feel like that is what the movie should almost be now. Like, you have the you have the shows to develop the character, and then now you can have them on the movie, like, you know, Endgame, and you can have massive battles that are, are, like, you know, cinematic and glorious. But then you won't have people complaining, oh, you didn't develop the character, because it's like, well, we did in the in the show. Like, go to the show now. But, but you know, as much as you have the, the CGI, the budget, the, you know, the, the big Endgame finale, nothing beats, you know, those characters from the Netflix series beating up people in a hallway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the famous hallway scene. The the the, the famous the famous amazing hallway scene. Yeah, or Punisher take the cake every time. Yeah, because Punisher had a couple of those as well, where he's yeah. like, you know, give me a building full of people and I'll I'll do it in one take type of thing. So, yeah. so what 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 kind of like you know seeing this this new format of how they're doing things, uh, you know, going into the you know more episodic type type shows. Um, what what would you like to see? Oh, like like what characters I'd want? Yeah, like what characters? You know what, what group? I'm... What what would you like to see on the next? You know, Disney Plus or Netflix or whatever. So you know, I kind of mentioned this earlier. I'm a really big sucker for teen drama, and the best yeah. <laughs> the best group for teen drama is X Men. Like I right. think if they you know kind of did like if they did the Runaways with the X Men, but be, but actually still had superhero stuff. I think that'd be a really interesting show. Because all my favorite, you know, storylines about X-Men and, like, other young superhero groups is, like, hey, you just learned about your power. Let's, you know, try to figure out your power and go from there and, like, also, you know, deal with the drama. And I feel like if you actually, you know, like I said, give them a budget, you know, give them, give them time to, to – give them a good writer, give them a good director. You can have a really good show with the X-Men, like a, a good group of yep. young X-Men. Dude – I still want New Mutants so bad. Yes. We're never yes. going to get it, but like I still <laughs> want to see what that us. was. Hey? <laughs> they keep teasing us. They keep like I feel like it's the most cursed production of all time. Like <laughs> it's it's never going to come out, but yeah. I want it so bad cuz the potential of it is just so good. And then again, like hey, if they just took that like if they did cancel the movie but then we're saying oh, instead we're going to make a TV show out of it, I'd be fine with that too. Yeah, because like I said, I think that would work better with a TV show where you have more time to develop the characters and develop backstory and go from there. And like, yeah. I, like I mean, this one uh, branching out a little bit from comic books, like that's the reason why My Hero Academia is so amazing, which is a super popular, like the number one manga slash anime in the world right now. Yeah, is because yeah. it's it's kind of like what made X Men good back in the day, where it's like you have a group of young kids. Just discover not just discovering powers, but they're you know dealing with their powers while also dealing with you know personal relationships. But then like not only do they have the personal relationship, but like I said, they beat the crap out of each other, and that's yeah. part of the fun. So it's like you gotta you gotta have that balance. So I think yeah. I think X Men would be a really good TV series. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. What do you what are you feeling? What's your number one top of your head? Um. So I'm gonna go way way off the map here. Uh, I'm gonna say if they did a Nova and the Nova Corps, mm. uh, because they could bring in some of the Guardian of the Galaxy characters. Oh, hey, Groot and uh, and and Rocket, they're CGI, so yeah. you don't have to book anybody. No, you <laughs> just, just gotta bring them in. I mean, all these, Vin in. Diesel has to do is say I'm Groot and give him a million dollars. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I I've always been fascinated with with Nova. I don't I don't know why. I can't even explain it. I'm not a uh, like a space superhero guy. You know, I was never into like the Silver Surfer or you know the the original uh, way back in the day Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, you know, or any any of those those ki kinds of superheroes uh, except Nova. I don't know why. And I think it's because on the DC side, I'm I'm a huge Green Lantern fan. I love Green Lantern. Um, and and it's kind of like 
okay, you know, Green Lantern's got a ring and a lantern. Nova has a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's basically you know Marvel's version of the same thing. Mm-hmm. But I you know I, I think you know sci-fi seems to do fairly well with just about anybody. Um, you know you got you've got the the ability to bring in. Uh, you know, guest characters, and even guest characters you don't even actually have to have actors there for. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you could do a, you know, do a lot with that because there's, I mean, it's space. It's just endless possibilities of, you know, whatever your imagination can mm-hmm. bring up. Yeah, because, yeah, and all you have to do for a storyline is, hey, we ended up at this random planet, uh, yeah. conflict ensues, you know, type of thing. Like, look at Star Trek. They based... How long was Star Trek going on for? <laughs> like, yeah, that's the entire premise. Yeah, and I mean the the new uh, uh, Lost in Space series on Netflix. They, they made two seasons out of that, mm-hmm. and they visited like two planets. Yeah. <laughs> lost in space. I mean, two planets. Lost in two yeah, planets. lost <laughs> on planet one and planet two. two yeah, <laughs> that's basically where they've been so far. Yeah, <laughs> space is massive. We promise. Yeah. Okay, so here's 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 another question for you. Mm-hmm. What you know, hero or group, don't you want to see? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, you know what? I actually feel like I wouldn't want a Batman TV show. Yeah, because like oh, Gotham. Yeah. I mean, Gotham technically didn't have Batman, but I right. f- but it basically did, and I yeah. feel like like Batman's just one of those characters where I feel like. Like, I get that, like, I mean, maybe if you did it more as, like, a, like you know, there's a new crime every episode and he's to solve the crime, that right. might be interesting, but I feel like for the most part, it just wouldn't work. Like, I feel like whenever I, like, you know, really good Batman stuff, I think, you know, like you said earlier, like the Dark Knight series and whatnot, like, if, mm-hmm. if, if that was a TV show, I don't think it would have been as good. Right. Because you don't really need to know... You don't need to get to know Bruce Wayne better. I feel like we all know who Bruce Wayne is. <laughs> he doesn't have that much, like, depth to him. You know, the his main character pl- points are, I'm rich, I'm sad, and <laughs> I'm really I'm smart. super smart. Yeah, super Wick- smart. I'm and wicked like, smart. And, like, and not saying anything, I like, still, you know, I still love Batman stories. It's yeah. just, I don't feel like any of his stories would be better in a TV show than a movie. Well, you know, I I feel like at at some point, you know, somebody uh, like they do with many many characters that make these you know these big superhero teams, somebody looked at the Justice League and said, "Why is Batman there?" <laughs> and then they were like, "Oh, uh, it's because Batman is so smart, yeah, and so capable of of you know devising a plan and being prepared." Mm-hmm. That he could take out the entire Justice League by himself. He can, Dave. If Shut he was up. prepared, you know, it, like okay, so a human mm-hmm. wearing a bat suit can can take out the entire Justice League. That's basically now his superpower, really. <laughs> yeah. It's just being like <laughs> super. His super superpower. Smart. His superpower is I am Batman. <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> his superpower is I don't trust anybody, so I have a plan to take you out. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's his plan. Which which I feel like is one of those things where it's like Batman got turned into that character because there's so many some of his most famous storylines is him doing that. Like yeah. you look at you know Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, it's him developing a plan to take out Superman and a bunch of other people, right? And yeah. it's like you look at um, like even you know Justice League, the animated series had uh, that storyline too, where his plans leaked. And it's like, oh crap! I gotta, you know, take care of it. I don't know. That's a rant. Like, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like, I just feel like, like I mean, the only, I mean, they did technically have a Batman TV show. It was yeah. a goofy '60s TV show where every week yeah. it was a new villain. But like I said, like I just don't feel like mo- it, like for modern times, I don't think it would work. Right. Any and yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just my opinion. What uh, what what do you got? Who who do you who do you think would be the worst TV show? Ah, the worst TV show. The worst TV show. I think, for me, because they just failed on every level <laughs> to do these this group right, is the Fantastic Four. Mm. 
if I see another Fantastic Four garbage fire, <laughs> just, I, just, I just, yeah. I mean, I, I just, like, you could take the Fantastic Four and and do a, like, a lost in space type thing that would make sense for for them, for those mm-hmm. characters. Because they were, you know, yes, they, they fought bad guys and they have obviously super villains that they fight, but there are also a lot of exploration and, and all kinds of, you know, uh, time travel and quantum universes, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's lots, like, loads of possibility there. But they have just epically failed mm-hmm. on every level to do anything with those characters. Yeah. And if I have to sit there and watch another trash show with these four figures, who are, I, like, I mean, for Marvel characters, they're, they're icons. They They were... Superheroes. They were the superheroes. Yeah, they're the, they're the first uh, family. Yeah. You know, for the for the for the longest time, and it's just it's sad that that you know that they've just beaten this this group into the ground, and it just has not even comic book wise, it's just not been able to get back up. Mm-hmm. Like the only the only thing I would want out of a Fantastic Four TV show is then then mm-hmm. maybe we would finally get their kids. Which is my favorite okay. part of Fantastic Four is not the the main four, it's the two that came out of them. Right. Like, that's the only thing I care about Fantastic Four, and I feel like it's one of those things where it's like the only way we're ever going to get those two characters is if they actually did a TV show, because then it would go long enough that they could have the kids. Yeah. But then, at the, like you said, like you have to get to that point. I don't think, like, I, 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 I agree with you. I don't think they have the capability, apparently, to, to even get to that point. So, yeah, Fantastic no, Four... No. Yeah, I don't even know what they would... Like, what would their weekly adventure be? I guess it would be like, oh, Reed opened up an alternate dimension again, that guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of, my, one, of my, one of my favorite, which actually happened to be in uh, that thing I don't like to talk too much about, which is the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know what you're going to uh, say. Was, was when they opened, when they opened uh, the portal to the zombie Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, that was fantastic. Especially yeah. the, you know, they let through the... The, the the zombie Fantastic Four and it was it was just it was great it was absolutely great mm-hmm. just having a like a a, a sick twisted you know uh, a hole Mister Fantastic going up against a young Ultimate Universe Mister Fantastic mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it, it was it was great but I mean I I just think that that's a that's a something that you know somebody would really have to like love the Fantastic Four and understand the Fantastic Four to actually, you know, draw, you know, up the right, just uh, the right mix that would just make it a good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be yeah, it's yeah. You actually have to care. Is the thing? Yeah. yeah. Did you hear that? Apparently, the rumors for Reed Richards and Sue Storm was John Krasinski. And uh, Emily Blunt. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, in that for a while, a lot of people have been uh, doing uh, some, some of their uh, their fancy computer editing and, yeah. and putting them into various different pictures and and, and whatnot. Um, I like the idea. I don't know if it's uh, if it's if it's a go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know that uh, one of them. I think he had actually talked to Marvel. Oh, yeah. And was in the works of, uh, you know, working out some kind of a contract on something. And of oh, course, everybody's, you know, theorizing that that, that it's going to be the Fantastic Four. Um, but no, I, you know what? I look at those two and I go, yeah, okay, I, I could see them as as uh, Reed Richards and Sue Richards. Uh, they, 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 I could see them in the roles for mm-hmm. sure. But again, I just. You know, I fear for their careers because it's just going to be a, a dumpster <laughs> well, fire. Because I just, you, you've made, you know, technically three of these movies mm-hmm. and you just can't figure it out. I mean, the good news is whoever plays Human Torch will then get a better Marvel job yes. later down the line. Yes, yes. Yeah, whoever Chris plays, Evans. Yeah, whoever plays Human Torch will go on to play, like, Moon Knight. Yeah. And it'll be, like, <laughs> the biggest Marvel movie ever. Yeah, it'll be the great, uh, world's greatest thing. Meanwhile, everybody else from that movie will just fade off into yeah. uh, obscurity. Never never see John Krasinski again. <laughs> yeah. The poor guy. 
No, yeah. it's it, it's you know it's a, it's a wonderful time for for comic book fans because you've got you know all of these uh, different mediums now producing you know material. Um, you know I've uh, you know been enjoyed. Uh, I've enjoyed and 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 been excited for most of the things that I've seen coming on TV or coming to Netflix or you know uh, or at the movies, but. You know, it's it's um, you know it's one thing to be excited. You see a wick, you know, wicked awesome trailer, and then you go to the movie or you go you watch the show. You know, and again, I think it boils down to did they did they have the right people heading up the show, and did they understand you know the meat of the character? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or at least like the reason why fans liked the source material. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, like, I feel like that's what gets lost in translation sometimes, is people look at, like, you know, Spider-Man, and they go, like, oh, the reason they like Spider-Man is because he's so strong. And, yeah. like, no, the reason people like Spider-Man is because, you know, he, he was, you know, a nerd, got granted this amazing gift, and now uses that gift to help people. You know, like, it's a very human yeah. story, but then has, you know, awesome fight scenes in included in there, right? Yeah, and, and I feel like, you know, like, if you want some, you know, some teen drama and some angst uh, on TV, you know, Spider-Man would have been, you know, as far as a, as far as a character, um, you know, a good one to do a TV series on, because I always felt like the comic was about Peter Parker, mm -hmm. who had to be Spider-Man. Yeah. Right? Until Dan Slott took it over <laughs> and then was like, oh, hey, uh... It's Spider-Man who has to be Peter Parker sometimes. Yeah. You, got, you, know, you gotta let Dan Slott go, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna let that go. You're gonna I'm, let it go. <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna let it go. Yeah. Uh, you know, he did, you know, not to not knock, uh, you know, Dan Slott too much. I mean, there were some, some great runs and he did some very interesting things, but, but his, his, his whole idea of it was like, let's focus on that superhero. And I mean, there are superheroes out there, like I think Spider-Man uh, with with the Peter Parker aspect, that are you know character first, you know superhero second almost. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, yeah. I mean, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I don't know how many uh, Michael Bendis comics uh, that I that I read that in the in the ultimate uh, Ultimate Spider-Man that was like you didn't see Spider-Man for like three uh, three issues. Oh yeah. It was, just, it was just dialogue and character stuff. Yeah, and it was great. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I mean, th there's your there's your teen angst now, and now they've yeah. got you know they've got a great opportunity right now. Like even though, and I hate I hate saying this because I always get just jumped on about this. I'm not a big fan of Spider Man Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. And and it's my thing. I'm not. I'm not hating. I'm not. You know, whatever other labels you want to throw on me. I just. I hate when they retool. They did the same thing with with uh, Spider Woman. There were like 17 friggin' Spider Woman, and they just kept <laughs> like retweaking her and making mm -hmm. her somebody else and giving her slightly different powers. Like I hate that. Like just just they could have made him his own character. Like I I, I love. I do love the character of Miles Morales. Like yeah. the the back. In the backstory, like who he is as a person. Yeah. I just, I just don't like that he's Spider Man. Yeah. Like you could have. Given I, I, I wish, like, name. I wish they would have just taken that character and made him a different superhero. Yeah, because I think like what happens is like you're saying is that Miles Morales is a great character that gets overshadowed by the fact he's called Spider Man. Yes. Because it's one of those yeah, things I where guess, it's like I some think people. The idea is fantastic, uh, but. I just don't like the the, the Spider Man angle, and it's just I mean it's not, it's just it's just have I enjoyed you know did I w watch Into the Spider Verse? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. It was very entertaining. It was yeah. awesome. You know uh, the comic itself, uh, you know, is good. I'm I'm looking forward to the the PS5 video game that is Spider Man Miles Morales. Yeah, you know I'm looking forward to those things. Not not the biggest fan of that version of spider-man just that's just mm -hmm. just a personal thing yeah but well, i mean i think there yet again is another character that they could take and say hey let's turn this into a netflix series yeah like Make that it's... would be terrific oh yeah because yeah the the drama he has is and the depth he has as oh. a character would be so great for tv yeah every time you turn around somebody he knows is doing something bad yeah ex yeah exactly or dying <laughs> yeah or dying yeah like he like yeah he just has a lot of I think that, like, like, 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Like, like my favorite storylines of Miles Morales is when he's dealing with stuff that's, like, personal to him. And my least yeah. favorite storylines is when, oh, an old villain of Peter Parker is now trying to mess with me. Yeah. Or, like, a problem from Peter Parker is now my problem now. But it's like, I don't care. Like, you shouldn't have to deal with that. You should be able to deal with your own thing. But it's like yeah. one of those things where it's like, because he's called Spider-Man, he has to deal with Spider-Man's problems. No, like, I mean, I, I mean, I would be a little more, uh, uh, you know, open to it in the sense of, like, if they got really creative, not that they haven't, they've, they've, they, they've done some things with some villains, but I mean, to your point, it's like, it's like, oh, okay, I'm Miles Morales, I'm my own Spider-Man, mm-hmm. but I gotta fight the Vulture, or I gotta fight Scorpion, or, I gotta, like, you're fighting all the same people. Yeah. Like, I, I wish they would just go hard into, you know, creating his own kind of rogues gallery. Yeah, like the Proud. And, and I, and I think I think he would be a an amazing one to take, especially considering the you know the absolutely uh, you know crazy times that we're dealing with. Um, would be a great opportunity to put something on that that you know even even a you know diehard Peter Parker you know uh, a fan of Spider Man could enjoy because. It harkens back to what Spider-Man was. He was a, a teenager in high school dealing with the, with shit that any of us could relate to uh, because we'd all been through it, mm-hmm. and that's what that's what you know brought you closer to that character. And I think you could you could do very much the same thing. Like Miles Morales really harkens back to that Peter Parker mm-hmm. side of Spider-Man, and I think that would be a, a a great even if they just did it as an animated series. Yeah. Like a full on, uh, like even if they did it like uh, into the Spider Verse uh, type thing, like which was terrific. Um, I, I think it would be a, a smash hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like I, I think there's a lot of, I, I think a lot of the animated TV shows are better than the live yeah. action stuff, and yeah. I think that might be a different podcast, but. Uh, or I don't know. We can, I guess we can talk about it because yeah, it is it is TV shows. Because like I yep. mean, Teen Titans, like the original Teen Titan TV show that the animated one that the Titans like is based off of was amazing. Young mm-hmm. Justice, which is pre- like the which I haven't seen the last season or anything like that, is amazing. And like Justice League is amazing. And like they did have uh, like animated Spider Man that was really good. They had animated X Men that was really good. And it's, it's it's interesting to think that like. Again, it's one of those things where it's like it feels like the the animated stuff is able to understand what makes the comic book so great. So why can't yeah. the live action also do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it, it's tough. I agree. You know, I mean, I'm I, I've never uh, gotten real you know hardcore into the animated stuff. Mm. Uh, but anytime I have sat down and and you know watched uh, an episode or a series, um, I've always enjoyed it because. It really, at the end of the day, it always felt like it was just moving comics. Yeah, you know, and and I think a lot of the elements were still there as far as the 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 art uh, and the writing. Um, you know, where whereas I think you know when you get to that that you know making a movie or of a t or a TV series, you know sometimes they lean a little too hard on like, hey, look at the act or actress we got to play this character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then they, and then they forgot to write it. <laughs> Yeah, forgot to make it good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's more like the the novelty of it actually being live action. That's like what brings people in. And yeah, they actually forget to make a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what's crazy though? Uh, going yeah. back to Runaways and like kind of going full circle here. Full is circle I, here. Is I actually want to see season two. <laughs> like like I actually do. You have a I, problem. I know I have a problem. Like it's one of those things where it's like you know I. I, I put in the hours, I watched season one, I hated it, mm-hmm. but I just want to see what, if they, you know, learn from their mistakes. Because there are, there, like I said, there are aspects I do enjoy, it's, and it's just one of those things they just made a bunch of dumb mistakes that kind of ruined it, that if they, like, if I get, sit down and watch season two, episode one, and it's the same problems, yeah, okay, I'll stop watching then, but if they actually show me in season two, episode one, hey... You know, we actually learn from our mistakes. Here's here's the thing. Hey, all forgiven for season one type of thing. And that's like, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, 
I don't know, it sounds sounds dumb, but it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like they can elevate live action. They just got to, like, listen to fans and understand what, why it was Well, it, it, it's been done. Like I, I previously mentioned um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, the first season was like, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, second season was much better, and then it got, and then it got, you know, I think it hit its probably its peak around the third season, third or fourth season. But I mean, it 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 got it did get better. The first season was was garbage. I mean, if you were to judge Smallville by the first season, <laughs> oh oh my god, yeah. it's, you'd stop watching after probably the second episode. Yeah. You know, but but eventually it got to the point where you know they had a, um, you know they had more more of a story than just. You know, uh, Clark Kent running around doing you know normal stuff, but with superpowers. You know, somebody infected with kryptonite goes crazy, uh, which all happened to be in in you know in Smallville, one small and, little town. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's what happens. But I mean, eventually it got it got better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it got a little more you know well rounded, but it can it can get better. But unfortunately. You know, I think uh, they've they've shown time and time again it can also get a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like even the Netflix shows sometimes those season twos were kind of unnecessary. So yeah, yeah, mm. it was like that was good enough. Thank you. Yeah, just just move on. Yeah, <laughs> move on to something else. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so that was uh, that was my rant about Runaways. I appreciate you uh, appeasing me, Dave. Hey, no, I, you know what? Uh, I I I will more than likely have a rant my of my own at some point yeah exactly i just need to get off my chest yeah so yeah definitely uh definitely something everybody should get used to like we're very ranty people sometimes so <laughs> there you go and hopefully one day we'll have something positive to say you know <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah, maybe we could just have like a like a positive episode yeah you know a positive issue where we where we just talk about the things we like yeah, which will probably be about ten minutes. Yeah, and then we'll pick up heart the things we hate about it as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> I love this show except for yeah. all these ninety things I hate. You know, <laughs> yeah. <No big> deal. <laughs> but if it was just this, great. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, make sure to follow and subscribe to whatever platform uh, you found us on. And yeah, make sure to mention in the comments. Uh, maybe hey, tell me why I'm wrong. I, I'm always interested to hear other people's opinions. Uh, and yeah, if you have a really amazing show you want to check out, let us know. Maybe we'll check that out as well. And we'll yeah, see you and, next and, time. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, suggestions as well. If if uh, if you have something that you want us to talk about or rant about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, put that in the comments. We'd we'd love to uh, cover off uh, uh, something. I mean, it's always it's always fun to just get angry and rant about stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, always a good time. Okay, we'll uh, see everybody next time. Thanks, guys.